Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In round four of Sharjah Masters, in the leaders' group on board two, Ernesto Inar Kiev won a very instructive game in Rouser Richter system against Nihal Sarim from India. After the opening, White managed to organize the pressure against e6 weak pawn by playing f5 and then the maneuver knight c3 e2 f4 followed by g3 and bishop h3 forcing black to play e5 after that white got a d5 square for the knight against the bad black's bishop combining the threats on the both sides white managed to destroy black's position a real masterpiece game well, actually, I just played uh, one month ago in the Flot Open uh, in the last round against Tabata A, Iranian player, the same line, uh, Bishop 7 And obviously that uh, Nihal prepared something. So uh, in that game I played E5 instead of Bishop takes F6. So today I decided to switch. After Bishop F6, it's a uh, uh, little bit unusual uh, for Rouser because we saved the Knights. Usually the Knights is also changing, so it's a little bit different story. And uh, because of extra Knights, position was more complicated. For, for play. I think I played the uh, interesting and just put my pieces in the center. This rook uh, h e1 -E is a uh, nice setup. After which already for him was uh, very important to find some decent plan to regroup the pieces. But I believe that knight a5 was just uh, too much. He, he loses a lot of tempos for, for this maneuver. And uh, uh, after f5, uh, white is mu must be better. Still, the position is complicated. This is actually typical rouser. I mean, you have a, a structure advantage, but uh, a lot of dynamic play is possible. But I think I managed to control him. And uh, actually, he felt that this is a very important moment. He spent like uh, 39 minutes on this move, but he didn't manage to, to solve this puzzle. Yeah, probably white uh, on c6 should control e5 square. Yeah, this is uh, like an uh, important one. Yes, yes, and uh, especially after uh, if I play f5, then already have knight e5 in one, one move. Yeah. This was important detail. But also you can regroup the knights. One knight goes to d4, the other to f4, g3, bishop h3, all these typical moves. Yeah, this is what I have uh, had in my mind, because uh, let's say I didn't want to show up what I'm going to do. Will I play f5 or not, or maybe something else? This is what I wanted, more uh, in ga gambling style. <laughs> I can say that... Uh, uh, the experience won that game, yeah? Because the problem Nikhal Salim is too young, he didn't manage to, to understand your real idea, real intent. Yeah, and also in my opinion, this uh, general rouser, uh, if you don't play it every day, it's quite difficult, because you should feel these nuances. Uh, computer shows that uh, black is probably fine, but uh, uh, from the practical point of view, this black is uh, more difficult, in my opinion, to play. So this is what, uh, what maybe he underestimated. And uh, with this time control anyway, it was very important to control, to, I mean, to, to take uh, the control of, uh, of the last, mo last moments with uh, uh, 30 seconds per each. So did you manage to do it? Did you, well, did, did you miss some? Well, uh, actually, I played uh, with him one year ago, and it was uh, similar from the, uh, the the picture of the game. I mean, I also got a, a big uh, positional advantage. It was a very nice game. And finally, in, in, in time trouble, he managed to escape with some tactics. So today I was uh, paying much more t attention to his possibilities. And probably because of that, I, I think I didn't uh, play the best moves, but I just controlled the situation. So uh, probably I, I could uh, break through before. But my, my, uh, my plan was uh, just don't let him escape. So I, I, I think I converted slowly than it should be. But I didn't, didn't see how he could uh, really escape. And some, uh, some general questions. If <laughs> uh, is it your first tournament in Sharjah? No, this is my uh, second, uh, second tournament here. I actually uh, want to say that uh, I, I like very much a lot of uh, details which uh, organizers pay, uh, pay to organize this event. This, uh, a lot, uh, this is uh, make the at atmosphere of uh, hospitality. Okay, for example, on only today I saw this big table with fruits, with everything. For the player during the game, it's uh, important to have the possibility to fulfill your, uh, your energy. So a lot of these small details and uh, re really uh, uh, real hospitality makes this tournament special for me. What is your goal for this tournament? Uh, well, uh <laughs> well, okay, just keep, uh, I don't know, for, uh, it seems that I'm number one for now, okay, but still a lot of five games. I don't, I don't think uh, anyone can keep anything, so just, just continue playing. And the other game of the day, 
Grandmaster from Egypt Ahmed Adli played with Mongolian player Utnasan. The game started slowly with trading the queens on a very early stage. But later on, Ahmed technically explored Black's weaknesses on the both sides. And in pawn endgame, White played a very strong move d6, calculated, calculated many moves ahead before his opponent resigned. Well, actually it started with um, the opening, I sacrificed the bone, but he didn't take it. And then at this moment, I had to decide how to do, deal with the game. And thanks to Mikhailo Alexenko, he was coaching me for some time. We worked together 70 hours and he killed my fun chess. <laughs> so he decided to tell me that you have to play, learn how to play some slow chess. So I decided like queen b3, I have a very small edge, keep the advantage and keep pushing on my opponent. So I had to play queen b3 and change queens, claiming that I have some small advantage there. And then I kept like growing up with the advantage till it became like um, much better. But I, I think I had some easier way. I'm not, I wasn't really sure, but I was like, I took the decision that I will take it very slow, like go very slow and keep the advantage slowly, slowly, like till the, I finish the game. And then till we reach to this bone ending, which was very interesting. I, when I played like Bishop, a, this idea Bishop B1, Bishop A2 was very interesting idea. I enjoyed it when I saw it. And then at this moment when he played knight f4, I had to calculate this pawn ending. Uh, like, if, you, if it's not winning, I shouldn't go there. So I had to, like, tick. There is a way to improve without going to this pawn endgame, which is probably winning, but... I wasn't really sure. The first decision I took before trying to find something else, let's check this pawn ending. Like, this is forcing lines, so let's go through it. So I took it like knight take the take take and I had to calculate till the ending. Actually, when he resigned, I had like five or six more moves calculated already. Uh, it was like he, um, when he played, he, when he resigned, he had to play king e6, king e4, and then king d6, king take f4. And now I had to take, calculate king c5, king e5, king take f4, king c6, and f5, and king d7. He catch the pawn, yeah? Uh, he catch the pawn. Yeah, he catches the bone actually. I thought king f6 could be winning, but I saw uh, an easier way to win because I was calculating like 10 moves earlier from now. So I saw that f6 is winning because f6, you go king e8, king d6, and I go take the bone firstly, and he keeps his king on f7, f8. You go back with your king on d6 and play f7, sacrifice the bone, the extra bone. He takes king f7 and you play g5 again, g6, and you play king d7 and takes the opposition and you go take the g6 pawn and win with last, one last pawn, the, the biggest soldier, yeah. <laughs> okay, and I have a feeling that you you got inspired by, by yesterday tweets. I mean, uh, tweets of uh, Magnus Carlsen and, uh, and Anish Giri. Yeah, it was very funny, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I got motivated, you know, like, even even the, the style of the game, very positionally in, in Carlson style, or, or Giri, I mean. Yeah, actually, a little more like Carlson, you know, like, it motivated me, this very uh, funny tweet, I, I mean, all respect to them, of course, like, uh, and actually, the current score with Magnus, he, he beat me twice after this win, but this win is something like good in my history so seeing them like speaking uh, and mentioning like this game from 2006 actually it's quite old uh, it gave me like some fun and motivated me like to play some very nice good classy chess today yeah <laughs> i know that you have a, a chess project in your country can you tell some words about it well uh, we have wadi degla adli chess academy uh, we have one branch already open for eight months. We have around 100 students there. Um, I see great talents over there. And we already launched our second branch uh, in Cairo also. So, and we have now around 25 students. I see great talents there and I really hope that we can grow, like make a new uh, generation of Egyptian ch strong chess players. And as I see, it helps you also to play better chess because this year you started well, played very good in World Team Championship and a rapid tournament in Saudi Arabia. Well, to say the truth, it takes a lot of time from my training time and so on, but 
to say the truth, the love of, of kids, like the, the feeling that you're helping next generation and the love they give to me, like they made them, me a very nice surprise party last February. They gave me a lot of love, so it motivates me a lot. So I'm really happy with it and I think it helps more actually. Okay, I wish you good luck for this tournament and new champions in your academy. Thank you, thanks a lot and thanks to Sharjah Chess Club. It's a great tournament at, and it's an honor for me to be here. After four rounds, we have a sole leader, Grandmaster Ernesto Inarki from Russia, who will face today in round five, Lie Kuang Glem from Vietnam. 14 players, just a half a point behind the leader, and we are expecting many combative games in this round five.